Hi, my name is Diane Diedrich. My company is C3D, and today we're going to talk about how to make your SketchUp models look, well, less SketchUp-y. A lot of people are just new to SketchUp, like quickly get turned off because they don't like the look of the default models that come out of it, but they don't really understand all the things you can do with colors and shadows and views and section cuts and style settings to change the appearance of a final model to make it look much more beautiful for your clients. Let's go ahead and see. So the first thing we're going to do is look at how SketchUp portrays color and light. So even though I have the same color F10 painted on all these walls, you can see it looks very different depending on which wall it is on. And that's theoretically SketchUp's figuring out how light would interact with the color when light hits it. So uh, except this color is so extreme uh, in its difference that it makes a lot of people crazy. Um, you can see this even more if I select this group and just rotate it around and see what happens to the colors on each wall as I rotate. And you see how they change, even though it's exact same color in each one. And again, this is SketchUp trying to say, this is what that would look like in light or dark. So um, the first thing you can do, I'm just going to go ahead and explode this, is if you turn on the shadows, then you can see that that um, changes the colors. Again, I'll just turn them off a bit more. But one thing you can do is go to the shadow setting. So if you go to window and shadows, there's a pretty big difference between the light and the dark. And that means what a color is going to look like in the light and what it's going to look like in the dark. So if you slide these so they're closer together and look at the colors green on the walls now, you can see that it's making much more of a believable green in your room. So that's one thing you can do to start playing with uh, making colors look more real in SketchUp. Of course, the problem with that is that uh, you really wouldn't have the shadow inside your house unless you were living in an open air pavilion on the beach somewhere, lucky you. So there's a cool little trick that you can use to keep the little shadows um, falling from your furniture, which helps to find the plan, looks kind of cool, and get rid of these big shadows from having a missing ceiling. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to make the walls into a group so we can give them some attributes. So again, remember your selection box tools. I hit the space bar to get to the selection box. And remember if you draw from left to right, the only thing that you select is what's entirely in the box. But if we draw from right to left, and make sure that I'm just on the top of these ceilings. That means I'm going to get, um, I'm going to select all the wall groups, but I'm not going to select any of the furniture. Uh, if I had doorways in here, windows, I'd again make sure um, that the doors and windows were part of the selection group because I don't want my um, door casting a shadow, just the furniture inside. Then I'm going to right click, I'm going to make it a group, and I'm going to right click again and go to Entity Info about this group. And here's the important thing is that you can give the ability for any group or component to cast a shadow and receive a shadow. So if I say I don't want my walls to cast shadows, then all I have left is um, some nice little shadows being cast uh, from the furniture itself. And you may want to adjust those so they're not quite as prominent. Um, I usually like them, you know, like around noon, somewhere in the summer. So I just get a little shadow detailing, um, but not um, that looks overwhelming, just so I get a little uh, little contrast. And here's the answer to one of those what the heck is happening tips. I'm going to go ahead and turn cast shadows back on. Have you ever had a gray shadow like this go through your model and you're trying to figure out what the heck it is? So what it actually is, is the um, ground plane receiving a shadow instead of the faces receiving a shadow. So if you can turn this model on the side, you can see that the ground plane is where the red and green axes come together. So that is the walls, which I turned shadows back on, are casting a shadow that's going to hit the ground plane. So to get rid of these gray shadows, um, you could either move the whole model up, which you might not want to do if you had a bunch of scenes set up, or under shadow settings, just undisplay, unclick the check mark by ground, and that will mean that you only have shadows falling on the faces of your model. 
Okay, so here's a simple bathroom model I did for a client. Um, this client was a designer, and the client that she was working with, the homeowner, hadn't talked about materials at all. So she wanted to make sure that um, we didn't add any suggestion of color or materials. So, of course, when you draw with SketchUp, you get these weird blue and white faces, and that just means the white is on the front face, or he, over here it's turned into light blue, and this other is the dark face. Uh, the back face, which is a dark color. So you could go and select all of these, right click and reverse faces, which um, because these are all divided into tiles, it's gonna take you a while to do. Uh, but another simple thing, if you just wanna get rid of this dark blue whatsoever, is go to Window and Styles. And I am uh, built this in construction document style because I like the nice clean lines in it. But um, the same thing is true if you're working in architectural style, you have the same blue and white. So you can actually change the color of the faces by if you go to edit, the first thing you see, and if you don't see, if you're here, you want to click on the second one, which is the face settings. And you can see the front color is white, but the back color is this bluish gray color. So if you double click on that, and go to Hue, Lightness, Saturation in the drop-down menu and just move the lightness bar all the way up. Click OK. Then you'll see that all the back faces suddenly are white also. Um, so that's one strategy for dealing with this and we'll talk about a few more. So first of all, just if you aren't aware, you can make so let's try to click on one of these views till we find, okay, the elevation view. I'm gonna move it to the right a little bit. So of course, this isn't uh, the classic elevation with just a 2D perspective. Um, it's like an elevated floor plan or I don't know what they would call that, an elevated elevation. <laughs> but you can, by going to camera, toggle between the perspective view, which is the default view or parallel projection and get more of a classic um, elevation that you can dimension if you want. But let's us go back to camera perspective. And I want to make this, use a section plane to uh, get into this bathroom. So I've used, people have asked me, how do you deal with a little tiny bathroom? So here I very purposely cut away a wall, which you can point out to a client. Uh, but often I'll use the elevation cut, which I'm going to show you. But I don't want just an elevation of this wall because I want to include some of the shower also. So I wanna show you how you can rotate an elevation. Um, so let's start by clicking the section plane tool. And you'll see if you move it around that it's gonna to snap to whatever surface it's oriented to. We want it to be snapped to this front surface so it's the in the, in the green orientation. I'm gonna click. It's gonna turn orange, which then I'm going to select it till it turns blue which seems like a weird extra step, but you can have a lot of section planes through your model, whichever one is blue, meaning it's that's your active section plane. So you probably know that you can select this and just moving the move tool, using the move tool, move it back and forth. But did you also know that you can rotate this just like any other item, any other object in SketchUp? So I'm gonna pick the rotate tool. I could press Q for rotate. And this also um, flips around to orient itself to whatever axis you're on. So I'm gonna orient it to the green axis here just cause it's easier than this flipping around. And what I do, if I hold down shift, it's gonna stay in that orientation. I'm gonna click once and click twice and click the third time to rotate. And then I'm gonna move this back um, till I have just about this view. Now to align that view, I'm gonna select it again. I shouldn't have deselected it. You can right click and there's an option to align view. And wherever your section plane is, that's gonna get you aligned exactly with that transparent pane. And then I'm gonna move it over to center it a little more. You don't wanna actually see these section planes, so I do wanna see the resulting section cut. So under view, I can uncheck section plane, and that leaves me the section cut, um, which is something like um, the tab that I have set up here. So let's see what else we can do with this. So this still looks not that great. So we're gonna look at some easy styles that we can apply to it um, to quickly make it a little more appealing. So if we go to window styles, 
Again, we're in the construction document style, which is one of the basic default styles. And you should always be modeling in the default styles, the other ones, um, because they have often sketchy edges or other things. If you think about it, every time SketchUp moves a little bit, it has to rethink about where every little bit of that sketchy line should be. In the straight line styles, it's easier for SketchUp to um, rethink the geometry. So one thing that a lot of people don't know, if you go to the sketchy edges styles, it's like, okay, People go, that's great, except um, there's no color. But actually, you can go to the Edit tab, and you'll see that in all these sketchy edges and the style settings, this first one, just the uh, hidden line mode style is selected. But you can go over to the um, shaded with textures style, click that back on, and um, the colors will come back. So we still have this white and uh, gray back color. But if there was actually, if we had added some materials to this, we would now have the same materials that we had in SketchUp along with uh, these new different line styles. So that's one quick way to just um, quickly change how your image is going to look. But let's look at some more options. And first of all, I'm going to click this um, this section plane again. Every time, unfortunately, you go to new style, the section plane shows up again. So um, I'm going to uncheck that, although it'll be back in a minute. So I'm going to go to assorted styles. And we're going to look at this brush strokes on canvas just to get a bigger idea of what you can do with the default styles that come with SketchUp. So again, here's a section plane. So let's look at what we can do to edit this. So here um, on the plane, the face color, the face settings, which is the second button over, it's kind of hard to see. They have selected that the front face should be peach and the back face should be limey, not even a lime. That's not a lime green. That's a horrid green. So let's go ahead and just say that uh, maybe we'll kind of keep this peach for the front. But on the back side, let's make that... Um, a little more of a brown color and we're going to say okay and that's going to change the appearance so that it still um, looks neutral but it's not quite as awful as the dark blue and white um, and if I go to the background settings you can see here that it has sky and ground checked you can very obviously see a sky and a ground and they've been and you can choose whatever colors you want that I and mean, you could have a uh, you could have a nuclear sky if you wanted to. But if you uncheck sky and ground, you don't actually see those anymore. And all you see is this background color, which they have set to this darkish um, kind of gray-brown color, which might be okay. But just to show you, I'm going to make that into a very light color also and click OK. And that will change that. Um, the next one over is the watermark settings. And you can see there that they have a canvas overlay. Um, so if I unclick the display watermarks, you can see a little bit about how that's adding that canvas look to this. And I might go back, whoops, and uh, to the face colors and just make this one a little bit darker and a little less saturated so we can see that a little better. All right, now let's go back to the watermark. And I'll unclick um, display watermarks and you see that canvas look goes away. So what that is is actually an overlay. You can have an overlay on top of your model or behind model space, which makes it look a little different. Um, so that's a way that you can add or subtract um, a canvas and you could import your own. So you could bring in a parchment looking paper, um, you know, just search Google textures or in Google Images for some textures, and you can have some nice little overlay of a texture. And this last blue box is just some modeling things that you can change how your model looks while you're modeling, but we're not going to worry about that now. So um, I'm liking all of how this looks, except I don't like these big, heavy, thick brush strokes. So I can mix things also. So I've got the brush strokes on canvas, and what shows up is all the different settings that we just looked at and uh, a second selection box underneath opens up. So I'm going to go to sketchy edges here and go back to that pen black that we looked at initially. And I'm going to just click on this 
And because this is a line style and edge setting, a line is how you draw the edges, and dump it into edge settings. So I just clicked and dragged. And then you can see that the lines turn from those big, kind of, to me, overly chunky brush marks to these thinner, um, I use pen. And then if you want to save this for a whole other reason, you can click um, Create New Style. And you can name this, uh, hey, it's my style. And then if you click this little thing, you'll save it. All right. So this looks a heck of a lot better than it did to start with. And I want to show you one other cool little thing. So um, if you've listened to any of my other videos, see me in class, you know that I really push this site called Form Fonts. It's formfonts.com. And um, they have models and textures that you can uh, get for $200 a year, which is a bargain, thinking about how much time and money it saves you. But what they also have, which a lot of people don't realize, is SketchUp styles. And if you look under here, under their styles, so people have created all these different kinds of styles that you could actually just import into SketchUp and start using them immediately without having to um, make them up yourself. And as you can see, they have plenty, which is very cool. And I'm not gonna go through how to download it now because luckily, it's going to go back to the beginning page here. Just in the last day, they've come up with this PDF about how to install them, which was always um, pretty confusing. But um, if you are a Form Fonts member and you're thinking about it, do check out the styles there because it's going to greatly enhance without much trouble what your models look like also. So here's what you do. One night, maybe with a glass of wine, maybe not, you spend some time just mixing around, matching, and having fun with some styles. Once you have saved it, once you've created your new style, you just uh, hit this little plus button and you rename it to whatever you want it to be. And then, if you click this little plus button again, you can save any style just by clicking and dragging it down to the assorted styles, and then it will be there for you in the future. So let me just show you some styles that I've created. Um, here I'm just on the basic default style. Here's um, Tech Pen, which is actually one of the styles that came with it, but I just wanted to show you this. Took the Tech Pen, added some color back to it, and then as always, if you turn on the shadows, that's going to help your um, rendering and try moving around to see what happens. Uh, but some other styles I've created, here's, um, sorry, here's a softer look. I call that my, st my style soft. Here's a crisper version, with little straighter lines. Um, here's a version that has um, this white out border along it to make it even more look like hand drawn. So um, you can see there's lots of options that you can quickly, once you have it set up with the press of a button, drastically improve your um, presentation models that you can send out to your clients. So um, this is like one of the funnest parts of SketchUp. Have fun, play around, and I'll see you next time.